Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Throwback Thursday. And tonight we're going back to 1993 and we're going to open up two boxes of 1993 Topps Finest. This was a super premium product back in the day and even, even more so now. These packs used to cost, they came originally with a suggested retail of $3.99 per pack, but that shot way through the roof. I remember these packs just being way out of reach, out of my price range. In fact, I've never opened up a pack of 1993 Topps Finest in my life until now, so I'm pretty pumped about this. Um, only 4,000 cases of 93 Finest were produced, and I have the original receipt from the original buyer here. You can see back in 1993, back in September of 93, they came out in the fall, a box only cost $75. Now, now these boxes are listed for $750 or more after tax. Um, you're paying around $800 a box. I did see a couple of these at the National for $800 to $850 a box. Looks like these were purchased out in Oregon at Keeping Scores Sports Cards. I wonder if they're still around. I hope they are. It'd be pretty cool. But yeah, $75, bucks, original receipt there. So we're going to open these up. Now, the big thing that we're going to look for is going to be refractors. The first ever refractor came out of 1993 finest and uh, they're pretty valuable you can go on ebay recently sold listings and see that most of the refractors uh, even raw are worth a couple hundred dollars the graded ones especially psa 10 go for over a thousand and uh, ken griffey jr refractor even his raw one i've seen a few sell for um, about a thousand bucks so we're going to be hopefully finding at least two of those, again, one in 18 packs. We might find only one. We might find none. We might find three or four, so fingers crossed. Um, let's get to open these up and see what we find. We're going to start with box one over here, so I'm going to move this one off the screen up into the corner there. We'll get that kind of out of the way. And uh, since this is a break, we have folks that bought into this by the pack, sold these on my Patreon page. And now let's be careful here with opening these because I think there's a jumbo top loader in here, possibly. Now we shall see. Check out the design and everything. There's only 18 packs per box. And uh, George is going to get the first pack that I pull out of this first box. You can see Jose Canseco is on the cover there along with Ken Caminetti. The other box has Kenny Lofton on the cover. And there is our jumbo top loader. You can see it is a nice... Roger Clemens, very, very nice. Roger Clemens, there's the back of it. So you get a kind of a sneak peek of what the cards look like. I guess back then they didn't feel the need to wrap this up at all. Nowadays, in any boxes with top loaders, um, or sorry, box loaders, they're always wrapped up almost like its own little pack. So here we go. We're going to start up here in the top left and just work our way around. Uh, George has the first pack. George, this is what the packs look like. I've never opened one of these in my life, I, I don't think I've ever even seen this design before. These were always behind the counter, of course, because they didn't want um, they didn't want people, I guess, shoplifting or whatever. So here we go. You can see these cards always did bow a little bit. So we have Ramon Martinez. You can see nice chrome finishes on these. Dwayne Ward, Ramon Martinez, Pedro's older brother, Doug Drabeck. His son Kyle played for a little while. Juan Gonzalez, baseball all-stars. Pretty cool card there. Mo Vaughn. And the last one is Chad Curtis. So no refractor in that pack. If you're new to collecting, a refractor is going to basically refract the light. It's going to kind of have like a little rainbow effect. That's what we're looking for. Um, hopefully we do find a few of those. By the way, there are um, 199 cards. And they put the top players in baseball from 92 in here. Um, so Chad Curtis was considered at one time to be kind of like a top prospect. He had a nice career and everything. Rookie card wise, the only really rookie card of note in this set is uh, JT Snow. So the most viable card in here is probably the Nolan Ryan if you go by Beckett Almanac. But um, basically any good Hall of Famer that you can get is going to be a decent one. All right, here's pack number two for George F. Let's see who George can find. We've got Sandy Alomar and uh, John Smiley, Brian Harvey, former closer there, and then Doc Gooden, all-star card. Also have a Dave Winfield and Hall of Famer Mike Piazza. That was a pretty hot card back in the day. 
1993 Finest Mike Piazza. Of course, his rookie card was 1992. But I remember as a kid, everybody was all, all about the 1993 Piazza cards. We were chasing after those, like the 93 Donruss Piazza. So that's a pretty nice one. And that's the last card of the set, um, which is pretty cool. According to Beckett Almanac, it's a $15 card. So nice Hall of Famer right there. So George F. with pack one and two. Next up, we've got Greg. Greg Wyrock taking pack number three. Let's find that refractor. Six high-tech cards per pack. We got John Cruck. He's still stills around. He's announcing, still in baseball. Sandy Alomar again. Kevin Mitchell, slugger there. Nice Mark McGuire. That's a nice one. Baseball all-star card. And then we have a Jimmy Key and Bucko Al Martin for Greg. So no refractor. One per box on average, one in every 18 packs. There are some refractors that are perceived to be a bit more scarce than others, and they are a bit more valuable, like Glenn Davis. You might think, Glenn Davis, he's not that good, but um, Glenn Davis had some nice seasons, and uh, his refractor is worth a lot more than just a regular common refractor of his caliber would be worth. Um, according to uh, Beckett Almanac, some of those refractors are worth even if they're common, several hundred dollars. So, and um, this is Michael M's pack, by the way. In Michael M's pack, we've got a Frank Viola Todd Zeal, who at one time was taking the hobby by storm back in 1990. Nice Tom Glavin all-star card there. And then we have a Charlie Huff looking really old as usual. And Eric uh, Hansen there is the last one. So no refractor for Michael. We're after the refractors. Now we go to pack number five for Caleb. Let's see what we can find here. It'd be nice if uh, Derek Jeter was in here, but Jeter is not in the finest set. His rookie card was a 93 Pops, but it was just a draft pick card, so I can only imagine what that would be worth if he would have been in here. There's Bernie Williams. It's a nice one right there. Alan Trammell. We have Ozzie Guillen. Um, Andre Dawson, all-star card. John Smoltz, Hall of Famer. John Smoltz and Cal Eldred is the last one. So again, no refractor. Matthew S is up next. Let's see what Matthew S can pull out of here. I always wonder about the Topps factory. It's in Pennsylvania, and I'm in Pennsylvania. I think it's uh I'd like to go visit that one of these days. I think it's out towards Philadelphia. I know they don't do tours, but it'd be kind of cool if they make a special exception. I could, you know. Do a little video of it and maybe give them a little bit of extra publicity. I don't know if they'd be into the. They might want not want Panini stealing their secrets. There's a nice um, Carlton Fisk Hall of Famer right there. Barry Larkin. Then we have a Tim Salmon, another one of the hot rookies of '93. I remember we were all about Tim Salmon back in the day. And Arrestus Destrade. I used to not like this guy because uh, Pirates had him and he was terrible. Then he went overseas and. Got kind of good. Came back and uh, I think he clubbed 20 home runs in one of the seasons when he came back. Next up is John A. John A likes his Yankees. Maybe we'll find a Don Mattingly for him. We'll, we'll see. I see JT Snow. So you got the rookie card. The Pretty much the only rookie card of note. And you get a nice Chris Sabo there. Chris Sabo uh, hitting a weak grounder back to the mound there. And then we have Alex Fernandez threw a no-hitter in the early 90s. I think it was 1990 he threw a no-hitter. And then Greg Swindell, 90 or 91. Then there is a Robin Ventura. Don't mess with Nolan Ryan, Robin. You learned your lesson. George Bell, slugger there. And JT Snow. That's JT Snow's rookie card. Another one of those 93 rookies that we were all about. JT Snow, again, had a nice career, but I don't know. Not really worth a ton of money. Kind of wonder about some of these rookies from today's crop, if they're all going to pan out and be big names and viable throughout their careers. Like right now, Ronald Acuna Jr. rookie cards are steadily climbing in value, especially that 2018 Tops update. All right, next pack. This is for Jonathan H. You've got a Kevin Young, KY from the Buccos, Rick Aguilera, Tom Candiotti, and uh, unfortunately, not a refractor, but pretty cool. It is a Robbie Alomar baseball all-star card, Paul O'Neill. And the last one is a Bob Welch, former Cy Young Award winner, Bob Welch. All right, moving on to the next pack, pack number nine for Anthony S. Hoping we really find at least one refractor per box. Again, 
it's on average. It doesn't say guaranteed per box. Sometimes you might find two, sometimes you might find none. So fingers crossed, I don't see a refractor in this pack. We got a Sheffield, Andy Bennis. I used to not like Andy Bennis for literally no reason at all. We won't speak about him. Uh, then we have Greg Maddox, the professor, Greg Maddox. One of the best pitchers of the 90s, if not the best pitcher of the 90s. Danny Tartable and Willie Green is the last one for Anthony. Pack number nine is down now. Pack number 10, Michael D. Let's see what Michael pulls. Uh, there's only about eight packs left or so. They, um, I guess they put some sort of like cardboard filler at the bottom of the box to uh, make the boxes look a little thicker than they actually are. Oh, there we go. Nice Aussie Smith. I think that one is uh, like a $10 card or so. Albert Bell, Eric Davis, and then we have David Cohn back with his uh, Kansas City Royals there for the Yankees. And then Tom Hankey always used to annoy me those glasses he would wear. I don't know why. Again, just because I was a 12-year-old kid. And Jose Guzman is the last one for Michael. 1993 was my most active year in the hobby for sure. 12-year-old kid. All I would ever do was buy baseball cards. Um, literally, I bought so much of all brands of, of um, 1993. Tops mostly. Also, a ton of Upper Deck. A ton of Donruss. Um not so much score, but some score. Andrew D is up right now. Marquise Grissom. You got an Aussie Smith. You got a Benito Santiago, a nice Joe Carter there. He was um, a World Series hero, hitting that Game 7 walk-off home run there. Mike Stanton, um, not John Carlo. That is Mike Stanton, the reliever, who pitched uh, for many years with the Braves and also the Yankees. And Mike Mussina, a nice Hall of Famer right there. Mike Mussina for Andrew. Thank you very much, Andrew. We'll get all these sleeved up, individually sleeve each card before we send them out to you. Next up is James S. We got pack number 12. All right, we have, uh, we're getting a little bit low on the packs here in this box. Hopefully we can find that refractor soon. Hopefully there is a refractor in here. This pack doesn't look like it. Uh, you can always, you'll be able to see the rainbow colors. Dave Hollins. Third baseman, Pat Borders. Kind of an unflattering picture of Pat. Then we have a nice Daryl Strawberry. Just pulled his autograph the other day out of five star. This uh, fifth card's always upside down. There's Darren Dalton, Dutch Darren Dalton. And our last one is John Jaha from the Brew Crew. And that is pack number 12. So now moving on to pack number 13. Lucky number 13. What? Will Linda W. find in pack 13? I don't know. She usually has some pretty good luck, Linda and Bob, so we shall see if number 13 ends up being a lucky number or unlucky. And refractor-wise, it's going to be unlucky. we got Glenn Davis, then Ramon Martinez again, Reggie Jefferson, Lee Smith, Hall of Famer Lee Smith, and then Lenny Dykstra. Lenny Dykstra is um, in some litigation now against former teammate Ron Darling. He's uh, accusing Ron Darling of um, basically tarnishing his character because Ron Darling wrote a book and featured a section about Lenny Dykstra and his um, conduct towards Dennis Oil Can Boyd in the on-deck circle. And, um, yeah, there's some ongoing litigation about that. So two former teammates involved in a spat unfortunately never like to see that and now we have pack number 14 for neil d let's see if neil no refractor again man we might get a refractorless box tony fernandez jose rijo kevin brown wade boggs that's a nice one wade boggs then we have jack mcdowell and hall of famer harold baines so you got harold baines and wade boggs a couple hall of famers in there kevin brown was an awesome awesome pitcher there uh, I think he was the first $100 million pitcher when he signed with the Marlins. And I think it was 97 he signed that gigantic deal. All right, pack number 15. So only four packs left. We're at the bottom of the box. You can see there is a nice half of the box is nothing but a spacer down there, which is uh, pretty interesting. All right, let's see what Kyle, Kyle can find here. 
And no refractor in this one. We have an Eric Karras, Reggie Sanders, Andres Galarraga. Then there is a Ricky Henderson. We also have a Delana DeShields. That's Delana DeShields Jr.'s dad. And Tommy Green, who once threw a no-hitter, his claim to fame. Sometimes I'll see his autograph, and uh, he puts, like, uh, no-hitter and the, the date on there. I think it was 1991 he threw that no-hitter. But um, Clayton C., let's see what Clayton can find. Will Clayton find that refractor? I sure hope so. David Need. I remember Dave Need. Oh, we got it. We have the refractor. There it is, guys. So Clayton C. in pack 16 has hit the refractor again. Roughly one per box on average. One in every 18 packs. And we had to wait until pack 16 to find this bad boy. So... Who's it going to be? Is it going to be a Hall of Famer? I, I'm i not sure, but um, we will see in a second. Let me go ahead and get the one touch ready for this bad boy. All right. I'm also going to put a sleeve over top of it when I put it in the one touch just to make sure there's not any scratching. So let's get all ready for this. One touch. Open this up. Clayton, congratulations. I really hope it's a big-time name or... You know, no matter what, it's going to be a nice pull. It is the hit of the box. All right, let's find out who it is. All right, so we've got Bobby Bo as our first one. Then we've got Pete Harnish, who was a nice pitcher back in the day, and Tony Phillips. Off of the back, we have a David Need, who I think in the expansion draft, he was the Rockies' first overall pick, and I think the Marlins took Nigel Wilson, but David Need ended up being pretty much a bust. He was a top prospect for the Braves, though. And Harold Baines. So who is your refractor, Clayton? Let's uh, let's show you your refractor. It's going to be... Oh, it's a Carlton Fisk. Very nice. You get a Hall of Fame refractor, Carlton Fisk. That is awesome. Congratulations on that one. Carlton Fisk, again, those refractors usually go for at least a few hundred dollars. A Hall of Famer like that, honestly, if you can get that graded, these cards look like uh, they're really, they're right out of the pack. So, I mean, it's going to be at least a PSA 9, you would imagine. I'm getting a one touch for you right now. This one's going to be a little bit of a challenge, so I have to be a little careful with it. Again, all these cards are a little bowed. Um, if you ever... So, seen any finest cards at a flea market or wherever sometimes you see them they do tend to bow a little bit so i got a sleeve over it i'm going to push it down with the sleeve so as not to get any fingerprints on it and we'll just close this up here and we'll show you the carlton fisk and all its glory in a second I'm trying to center the uh center the sleeve in there and there it is Carlton Fisk Refractor. Very, very nice. Here's the back of it. Um, congratulations, Clayton. That is a big-time hit right there. So that's what we are looking for. We still have one more box that we get to go through. Heck, maybe we'll get another Refractor. That would be pretty crazy. Kind of weird how they have this little, like, lip in here. I don't know why there's that lip. All right, Thad, you are up right now. So, Thad, good luck. I mean, even though the refractor is gone, it's just on average 1 in 18, so there might be two in a box. You never know. Looks like there's not another refractor here. You got Jeff Montgomery, Bernie Williams, Chris Bossio, Cal Ripken. That's a nice one. Cal Ripken baseball all-star card. Norm Charlton, part of the Nasty Boys, and Dean Palmer for Thad. And the last pack of this box goes to Linda W. There we go. You can see the box is empty. There's this weird cardboard thing in here that fills up half the box we can put this box off to the side and linda's pack let's get this opened up and see what we've got for linda all right we've got a randy johnson on the back that's a nice one right there hall of famer randy johnson tim wakefield i would have been all about this card when i was a kid matt williams travis fryman bo jackson nice all-star card there junior felix Kind of remember Junior Felix a little bit. And then Randy Johnson, the big unit. So that is box one done. Very nice refractor right there in uh, Carlton Fisk. Now we're moving on to box number two, our second and final box of this throwback Thursday. Johnny Baseball's got the first pack coming out of this box. So we do have that jumbo um, 
box loader in here. Let's see who it is. We've got Roger Clemens in the first box. This next box hopefully produces another Hall of Fame caliber type player. And it's a uh, Jose Canseco. Jose Canseco is the uh, the box loader right there. Not too bad. Canseco in his Rangers uniform. Looks like the pack shifted around on us a little bit. So I have to try to put these back in the, I don't know what is the correct order here. Looks like they shifted all over the place. So I don't know. We might end up, um, I'll still try to go and as uh, logical order but pack number one that i pull out of the box regardless of where i pull it from is for johnny so johnny good luck let's find a refractor we've got no refractor in there we've got brett saberhagen we've got rafael palmero john w there we won't say his name because he's uh you know allegedly involved in some messed up stuff there's tom glavin then we have paul o'neill and mike stanton for Johnny Baseball. Next up, we've got Dennis A. Taking pack number two out of my messed up, um, doesn't look, there we go. A little bit of uh, OCD kicking in there. Got to have all those packs nice and neat. All right, Dennis. You got a Robin Yana on the back. And, oh, Dennis, you've got the refractor, man. You guys see it? Do you, you see, you, if you look closely, you can see the rainbow, you can see the light refracting there. So we have our second refractor hit, and it's early in the box. Maybe we'll get two out of this box. We've got John Cruck. We got a Caminetti. And, by the way, these aren't as boat as the last box, which is nice. We've got Robin Yao, and we have Jose Guzman. And your refractor hit is going to be, um, it's a... Reggie Jefferson, so a common refractor, Reggie Jefferson. Let me just double check really quick and see if this is one of the ones that is a little bit scarce. Reggie Jefferson is not one of the scarcer ones, but regardless, it's still a nice uh, hit to get a, um, a hit like that. So we're going to take it. We're going to one-touch it for you. You know, you never know. You might still want to get it graded. A Reggie Jefferson refractor, still a nice pull there. All right, let's get a sleeve on this bad boy. So we hit both the refractors. Uh, I was hoping for two. Now we're going to try for, going to be a little bit greedy here and try for three. There's your Jefferson Dennis, all nice and one touched up for you. So congrats on that one. Moving right along to pack number three is Robert P.F. Robert Let's hope there's some more refractor magic in these packs. I, think I've, I can't remember if I've seen somebody pull two out of a box before or not. Yvonne Rodriguez, Hall of Famer. Jay Buhner, switch these around. Nice Kirby Puckett all-star card there. Mo Vaughn and Darren Dalton is the last one for Robert. Next up, pack number four is for Nicholas JT. Gets the fourth pack pulled out of the box. And uh, we've got a little bit of dryer action going on upstairs, so sorry if that's a little bit annoying in the background there. The uh, laundry room is right above where I'm at right now in the basement. Mitch Williams, Eric Young, Carlton Fisk, non-refractor card, but still a nice one right there. We have a Dot Gooden and John Smoltz. And the last one is Jack McDowell, who had a great season in 1992, if I'm not mistaken, looking at the stats. Yeah, 20 wins, 20 wins and a 318 earned run average. Anytime you put up 20 wins, um, you're doing something right, and your team is also scoring for you. All right, so Dennis A is the next contestant on this Throwback Thursday. A little bit of a higher-end Throwback Thursday here, getting these expensive boxes. We got Eric Karras, and then we got Gary Sheffield, Tony Phillips. Get a nice Cal Ripken, which is pretty nice. And then Tommy Green and Al Martin is the last one for Dennis. Pack number six from box two is for Joseph B. Five, six. It's good. I'm going in this kind of like an order here, but I have a feeling it's going to get all messed up near the end just because the packs were kind of shuffled around a bit um, in the box. All right. We've got Ramon Martinez leading things off for the third time. Ozzie Smith for the second time. That's a nice one right there. We also have Chuck Finley. Robin Ventura, 
Chad Curtis again and John Jaha again. So we will start to see some repeats now in the second box, especially because there's not a whole lot of cards in the set. There's only 199 different cards, but Linda W's up now. Pack number seven. Pack number seven is usually considered a lucky number. She went with pack number 13 last time. Didn't hit the refractor. Going for seven now. Let's see what she gets. Jeff Conine, Saberhagen. Haven't seen him yet. Andres Galarraga, slugger there. Roberto Alomar, Hall of Famer. We also have, man, I hate when Tops does this to me, flipping these cards every which way. Darren Dalton and Lenny Dykstra are the last two from those Phillies of 93. All right, pack number eight for Patrick M. Good luck, Patrick. I really hope we find another refractor in here. The first ever refractors, 1993 finest. We got Harold Reynolds. That's a nice card. Reynolds, of course, you guys know him from his work as an analyst. We got Eric Davis. Barry Larkin is a Hall of Famer right there. Danny Tartable. I believe he once appeared in an episode of Seinfeld. And Junior Felix is the last one for Patrick in pack number eight. Moving right along to pack number nine is Kirk. Good luck, Kirk. Let's see what we get for you here. JT Snow rookie cards on the back. Frank Viola is on the front. Eric Karos, um, what was he? Rookie of the year, was it 92, 91 or 92? Um, must have been 92 since he's in this set. Um, then we got Chuck Knobloch. Larry Walker, future Hall of Famer. I do believe that Larry Walker will get into the Hall of Fame this coming winter. I think he'll be inducted or at least elected along with um, Jeter, 9-10. And um, I'll have to look over who's up for election and see who else is possibly going to get in. But I think that, I mean, Jeter's a lock, but I do think that... Um, Walker's going to get in. It's his last year of eligibility. Harold Baines, Hall of Famer. You never know. You can fall off the ballot and still get in. Just ask Harold Baines and Lee Smith, guys that we didn't really consider to be Hall of Famers. At least I didn't. I mean, I thought they were really good players, but never really considered them Hall of Famers, and they were able to sneak in. All right, here we go. Our next pack, pack number 11 is for Andrew. Michael had the last pack, and um, we have a... Yvonne Calderon, Jeff Conine, Ken Caminetti, Daryl Strawberry, Baseball's uh, All-Stars there. Jack McDowell and Norm Charlton for Andrew. Pack number 12 is for Dylan. Let's see what Dylan gets out of pack number 12. See if that's lucky. What pack got the refractor last time? I think it was 16, wasn't it? So, all right, Dylan, let's see what we have here. I think Dylan's got a couple packs in this, so he might have pack 16. You got Jimmy Key on the back. You got Brian Harper. I remember Brian Harper, catcher for the Twins. Harold Reynolds again. Doug Drabeck. Then we got David Cohn, Delano DeShields, and Jimmy Key. So we're starting to see the repeats now, which is okay. Next up, James M. Lucky, pack number 13. Let's see if it ends up actually being lucky. I'm hoping that it is. We've got Kevin Young is the first one. Frank Viola. Tony Gwynn, nice Hall of Famer right there, of course. Don Mattingly, not a Hall of Famer, but sometimes I wonder if Mattingly is going to get in eventually on the uh, Veterans Committee like Harold Baines did. Uh, Mike Mussina, Hall of Famer, is the last one. Mattingly definitely way more dominant than Harold Baines ever was in his prime. The only difference between the two is um, Harold Baines compiled the numbers, um, played a lot more seasons than Mattingly, therefore ended up with better... Total cumulative numbers, but Mattingly definitely mid 80s. Look out, Don Mattingly was the man. Pack 14 for James S. We got Juan Guzman, Yvonne Calderon, Tom Candiotti, the candy man, probably throwing a knuckleball right there. Wade Boggs, Junior Felix, and Eric Anthony are the last two for James. Only down to four packs left. Trying to see if we can find another refractor. Pack number 15 is for Dylan. We did find two refractors so far. For whatever reason, if you skipped ahead in the video, like 10 minutes, 20 minutes, and um, Carlton Fisk was pretty sick. And the uh, Reggie Jefferson was a nice one too, although Jefferson's a common, but still a nice one to have. Jose Canseco, John Jaha, and Ruben Sierra for Dylan. Moving on to pack number 16. Let's see if it is a lucky one for 
William. It was lucky last box, that's for sure. William JG. Got a Randy Johnson on the back. So that's good. Always like finding Hall of Famers. Gary Sheffield. Probably would have been a Hall of Famer if uh, not for all the steroid stuff going on in the game. Ended up with a um, ton of home runs. I think he, I forget his total. Over 500, if I'm not mistaken. Mike Devereaux. Lee Smith, Hall of Famer. Willie Green, not a Hall of Famer by any stretch of the imagination. And Randy Johnson. So two packs left in this throwback Thursday. Number 17 is for Dylan. Take that one out of that little lowered spot there. Again, that's really weird how they do that. I guess they did that to try to kind of like stagger the packs so that they weren't moving so much. I feel like... Um, I don't know, the packs are so thin they could kind of scooch up and down and then just become a big ball of packs. I think they tried to do that to stagger the packs so they weren't going to move around too much. Carlos Baerga, Guzman. Then we have Pat Borders, who's uh, struggling to handle a throw there at the plate. Bo Jackson, and then Jimmy Key, and Rob Dibble. Our first time seeing Rob Dibble tonight. Closer for those Reds of the early 90s. And Linda W's got the last pack, so let's see if we can find some... Magic here in this last pack for Linda. And let's see what we get here. We've got a George Bell on the back and no refractor. So we got our two refractors, one per box. Um, that's about what we were expecting. It's hoping for a little more, but at least we got what we were coming into this hoping we would get with two. Juan Gonzalez, Juan gone. Charlie Huff throwing a knuckleball, and George Bell is the last one for Linda. So thank you very much, everyone that participated in this episode of Throwback Thursday. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate you guys taking 30 minutes to check out uh, 1993 Topps Finest. I'm going to have to go now and go look up that Carlton Fisk and see what that goes for. Um, again, first ever refractors ever, 1993 um, Finest kind of really put a lot of things in motion um, for the uh, – the hobby going forward and um yeah this was a groundbreaking set and one of the most important sets of the 1990s so we definitely had to do this one for throwback thursday i hope you guys enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it uh let me know if you ever bought tops finest and if you did how much did you pay per pack back in the day um maybe if you pulled any refractors let us know in the comment section and also please hit that subscribe button i really appreciate it we're almost at 41,000 subscribers thank you so much for your support uh you guys are awesome i hope you have a great night everybody and i will see you tomorrow